Yes? Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, I gave you these little notebooks through, oh my God. <laughs> through Elena and she gave these notebooks to you on Monday. I recorded a short message to give you some ideas about how to approach the activities proposed in this notebook and I just want to know your experience with the notebooks. Maybe you lost your notebooks, maybe you don't even have your notebooks with you, maybe you started doing one activity and then you forgot, maybe you did everything, you didn't, you think this is stupid, tell me your ideas. What's the topic of conversation? No. Yes. So yes. What were you talking about? You have done it, but we have to do that kind of questions. And where so you... What's present in our lives here, kind of. Alright, so were you trying to do it or not? Some of us. <laughs> Some of you. Some. And how was it? Good. In which way? In the way of, you know, thinking about what you suggested. I wouldn't have done it if you had suggested it. I wouldn't, you know, brush my teeth in a different way. Normally I start my thing where I'm thinking about my thing, my problem, but I have to, and I, I can't remember how I grasp it. This usually happens when you're driving a car. It, ha it can happen to you. You're driving your car and you forget. You're not paying attention. You're not paying attention. Yeah. That happens a lot. But not only with driving a car or with brushing your teeth, it happens quite often. That is called automatic pilot. And this is a being mode in which we are, usually. And I am particularly interested, I will go back to this experience from time to time. So I will be asking you about your ideas about some parts of the notebook. But I am particularly interested in asking you about the stress management question. And I'm <coughs> going to start with an activity related to that. I don't know if you did it. Did you do the, the stress management uh, questionnaire? Yes, you did that. Yes. So this questionnaire, I told you back here, this questionnaire was created in 1983, long time ago. Mm. Well, not that, that long, I have to say. <coughs> <laughs> and, and I tell you there that you've got three different <coughs> stages. So I want to start this workshop you will not have any um, theory, kind of theory in class here today. So this will be quite experiential. And what we are going to do to start is a systemic photograph. Have you ever heard of it? No. Well, this is a, an activity that is very much used in coaching. Systemic photograph. So those of you, you, did, you say you did the questionnaire, right? Mm -hmm. And do you remember the value you obtained? Okay, so everybody which obtained like a low level, low perceived level of stress, everybody, if you obtained from zero to 13, you have to place in the room from here, imagine this is zero and this is 13. This is 13. So those of you who got 13, you can be here, you can be here. So you've got all this space to place yourselves. If you got from 14 up to 26, let's say you come here in the middle. And you would say from this black uh, box up to that one in the middle. And those of you who, who obtained a very high <coughs> received level of stress, yeah.
about, now that I know where you are, that gives me information about how you are feeling, how you've been feeling in the last month. Remember, this is related only to the last month. So that means that your stress levels can go really high at one point and then the next point be low because it changes over time. So the picture that we took here today, if we came here at the end of August, we would have a different result. If we came here at the beginning of September, a very different result, like scratching your skins. All right? And so this is a good way of getting to know where you are, where your groups are in class. And this is a very interesting activity that I think you can use. Well, and now that I am connecting with your anxiety, or lack of it, I'm going to propose you to do the first um, activity that you have in your handouts, which is activity number one. That activity I want you to do individually. Please don't talk to anybody. Be as frank as you can. And focus on explaining or... You forgot what? No, but I mean, I mean in the handouts. You don't need these. Do you have more copies of this? No. I don't know. Um, do we have more copies? No, okay, we should. We should have our I don't have a copy myself. So can you please go and ask them to, to take five more copies? I don't have a copy. I don't have a copy. So they need a copy and I need a copy too. <coughs> So in the activity what you have in your daily experience, which new situations time you can have this. Okay, thank you. Which new situations do you face in Quill settings that you haven't experienced in your regular teaching practice? And then I'm asking you three different four different questions. First one is related to your students. The second one is related to clean parents your students' parents. The next one is related to your colleagues. And the last one is about you. So please take four or five minutes to write about it. If you prefer, you can turn your page and instead of writing in vertical, maybe you, you prefer writing in horizontal. <coughs> maybe you, it's nicer to me. In a, in a clean environment right now, <coughs> if you are not doing it, if you still don't have any experience in a bilingual setting, try to predict how these educating agents may feel. So in case you are not participating at the moment, think about that.
Mary Carmen. One photocopy for him. For Jorge? Yes. That's from him, right? that we have done, now we're going to do our uh, pair work. 
you need to find something in the class, somebody in the class. It can be someone who is next to you if you want. If possible, I'm, I know that we are already in Thursday. You may have been talking to each other. But if there is someone that you have not had the opportunity to talk to before, choose that person. And I want you to be together in pairs, standing up if possible. So, find somebody, go to that person and stay together. But please, don't talk. So in your groups, you need to you choose fear, so fear is for you, and you need to answer the four questions, the five questions that you have there. Mm -hmm. You are going to be fear as well. Then we go to anger. Okay. The four of you, anger. Mm -hmm. All right? Consider that the uh, basic emotions are five, but this is where our well, there are these disagreements between some researchers. Some say there are more, some say there are less. Let's say we've got basically five universal emotions. We are going to be working today with four. In these four, can you see the balance between the ones we have? I said fear. Did I say fear here? No. Fear, fear, anger, sadness, happiness. Do you see a balance or an imbalance? What would you say? How would you define these unbalanced? Negative. Like, negative. And positive. Only one would say positive. Only one would say positive. Emotions are not positive and negative. We have a positive attitude to some and a negative attitude to some others, which is different. But emotions, all of them are necessary. And we need them to be here as human beings. Otherwise, we would not be here. We would not be in this world. They are helping us to survive as a race, as a human race. The five basic emotions are these four plus when you feel like... When you don't like it. Have you seen, have you seen the, is it Pixar? The film, The Inside Out? You've got the five emotions there. All right. Okay, look. Let's take a look at what you had in your emotion chosen. So we have here fear, fear, and what are the body sensations associated to it? What do you feel in your body when you are afraid? I a split heartbeat, uh, difficulty to breathe. Yes. All answers different. Or what? Anxious breathing. Anxious, okay. So you are like hyperventilating. Yes. Yeah. Like this. Just pressure sometimes. Yes. Um, tension. Yes. And Your muscles are stiff. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And alertness. Alertness. What do you have there? Same? Different? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Most. Uh, we also have sweating. Uh, sweating? Sometimes. How are your eyes when you are afraid? Right. Yeah. The pupils okay. dilate. So this is really physical. Yeah. All right. And the reading is more superficial. Yes. It be more yes. Superficial. And quicker. And quicker. The heart rate may increase. Yes. And yes. Same. Now, which reaction does this emotion foster? What do you have when you have this emotion? Which are the characteristic feelings that allow you to recognize it? How do you feel when you're afraid? Paralyzed. Paralyzed. <coughs> um, anxiety. Yes. Uh, feeling of losing control. Losing control. You can either be paralyzed or what? Other possibility. You when you are afraid. You can fight. You can fight. You can fight. You can fight back. You can fight back. Yeah. Yes, but that's, that means that then you go to another emotion. Yes. <laughs> So you either paralyze or run away. This is what you usually call to freeze, freeze, 
or flight. You go away. If you fight, then it means that you have moved to anger. All right? Now, which is the biological function? When you have fear, which is the biological? What does this emotion help you to do? From dangers. Dangers. So, is this emotion necessary? Yes. yes. Completely. Okay. And now, what thoughts do you have when you have this emotion? Do they belong to the present, to the past, or to the future? Generally speaking, because I'm talking in general terms. For with every person, it can be different. But in general, if you're afraid, you're usually afraid of what? Future. The unknown. The unknown in the future. All right? Okay. The unknown in the future. And the last question. If this emotion is not properly handled, to which other emotion do you go? Anger. There. We come here. Uh, what do we have here? Anger. Can you tell me the body sensations? Any of you? Your anger? Your anger? Can you tell me? Sorry? No energy. No energy. No smiling. 
Yes, so in your face you can see that tear. Crying. Crying. Being tired. And what happens to your heart? Your heart rate. And your blood pressure. All right? All right? And your breathing. What happens with your breathing? When people they are sad, what do they do? Yes? All right? Now, the emotion triggers a reaction. Which is the reaction when you are sad? What do you do when you are sad? You want to be apart from people. More.
But we have happiness, that little mm -hmm. tiny dog there, happiness. Why is happiness important? Why do we need happiness for as a human race?
you will have some activities in one of the slides. So I'm going to pass it here. <coughs> These are some activities you can do, because I know you want to take some activities. So have this in mind. You have these activities for you. You have my contact information at the back of your notebooks. And what I want to let you know is that when we take mindful activities in class, we need to be really careful. We cannot do activities at the wrong time, as we we were saying at the beginning of the session, before carrying out any activity in class, you need to do that as well, before. <laughs> Don't do anything in class that you haven't experienced before. Also, think about ways of giving answers and making your students interact, which are not linguistic. Because that way, you are taking out all the mental, I would say, rubbish that both your students and we have in mind. So try to find ways like what, what, what I did, for example, other ways of doing it. Look, any answer, any, any reaction students, students have is okay. Because it is okay to feel sad, it is okay to feel anything. So think about that. And especially with teenagers, you cannot ask your students to do things if they don't know why they're doing it. They need to be aware of the benefits of doing it. So before doing anything, explain to them, I'm going to propose this activity to you. This activity is so because it will bring this to you. Because if they don't understand, they will start thinking, why the heck am I going to start moving that way? I don't want to. All right, so always explain the reasons why those activities are good. And choose an anchor, what's that? Choose an anchor. Choose an anchor, choosing an anchor is um, doing a little meditation in which you either choose your breathing as an anchor to focus your attention so that you empty your mind. <coughs> All right, and the butterfly is that, well, every time that you ask them to do a meditation, always sitting straight or lying down on the floor, I don't mind. But your back, your spine, straight, always. Butterfly meditation, either lying down on the floor or sitting down, I don't mind. Um, they have to imagine a butterfly posing on different parts. You lead the meditation, they pose on different parts and they need to be taking their attention to that part. It may be my hip, maybe my toe, maybe, all right? And, well, mindful eating, you know that, like one tiny thing and they have to hear that, touch it, all right? Walking as if is really interesting. Like, I want you to walk as if you were angry. And they need to walk as angry. I need you to walk as sad. I need you to, so things like that. Um, Sorry, what about, we're late. Sorry, yeah. what about stop, beat, yes. <laughs> Okay, that is a very, very I'm happy that you asked. I could be here forever. Mm -hmm. In that activity, you do that when you want to change. You, are, you have been doing an activity, and then you want to change into another activity. Before you do that, you ask them to stop, breathe, be, and then you can start the next activity. This is an activity to stop for example, if they are very excited. Yes. You yes. Also, one last thing. When you are doing these breathing activities, if you focus on uh, the out breath, stretching the out breath, they will relax. If you focus on the intake of air, you will activate them. All right? So when you are asking them to breathe, always focus on the out breath more than in the intake of them. Thank you very much. We're late.